present Kenneth Williams, Derek Nimmo, Clement Freud and Sheila Hancock in just a minute. And as the minute rolls fades away, here to tell you about it is our chairman, Nicholas Parsons. Thank you. Thank you very much and welcome once again to Just a Minute. And once more we have these four clever experts of the game who are going to try and speak for just a minute on some unlikely subject that I will give them without hesitation, without repetition and without deviation. And if they can do that, they will gain points, and if not, the others will challenge them and try and win points themselves. This is the way we play, this is the way we score, and Clement Freud, will you begin this week? The subject is Bacchus. Can you talk for 60 seconds about Bacchus, starting now? Bacchus was a Greek all action, goose-living, wine-swimming god. I suppose if one looked for a similar person today, you would think of Derek Nimmo. Ah! Devonair. Over the second and romped home to win fraction by a neck. <laughs> 
Uh, Kenneth Williams, my good challenge. Oh, where, where is this thing being here? Just <laughs> get me to the winning thing, Claire J, if you shut up. <laughs> I don't think it's very nice to say to your partner, shut up. Actually, it's your opponent, you know. Yes, I've always shown him the greatest courtesy ever. Yeah.
you don't like to wear ladies' clothes, that's called drag as well, you see. Now, I had a dress from the theatre, who was awfully kind and helpful, and in the evenings he used to go out and do a little time and shows, and when he did, he was six foot five, an American, very large, and he used to wear these very pretty plimpton apparel. Now, I remember one day, a major general came to see me with this good lady, and I'd forgotten it was the night for my friend to go out on a visit. <laughs> And I said, uh, would you care to bring me a drink? And he said, come in, Mr. Lamont, coming. And in he came, and he had a lovely long gown with a tiara, and lovely hair and earrings, and beautiful fur coat, and a stone, and long gloves. And the stoker looked at him somewhat again. He said, oh, sir, now, what would you have to drink, like a gin and tonic, or would you like some whiskey? And he said, uh, oh, Sheila, you I had joking. to do that. Uh -huh. Sheila has another point, and there are five seconds left for drag Sheila starting now. You can't talk of things being a drag. And I find that life is sometimes a drag. Ah! Oh! Have I actually that, won? That scream of ecstasy came from Sheila, who was feeling something then. <laughs> she was feeling excited because she thinks it's the first time she's actually been speaking with the whistle wind. It is. It and is. you're now in second place, Sheila, alongside Clement, who are with uh, one ahead of Kenneth and just behind Derek, who's still in the lead. Putting a bold face on it. That's the subject, and it's your turn to begin, Kenneth. So can you put a bold face on it and try and speak for 60 seconds on that subject starting now? This is something one frequently has to do in public, and one of the occasions where it is most noticeable is the interview, which is apparently impromptu, when you suddenly have this thing shot at you from blue without expecting it, and it goes to be extremely embarrassing. It happened to me quite recently, and this gentleman who had written a large poem on the subject of the Irish Rebellion, which took place in 1780, said suddenly to me, why should you, why should you be showing your face here in Ireland after the dreadful things your country has done, you dreadful industry? I said, I'm well steer. <laughs>
29 seconds, <laughs> Kenneth, for arguing with a man starting now. Well, of course, it's something I do frequently. I was doing it before this show began. And as a matter of fact, I... Uh, Sheila, why do you trust? Deviation. He was arguing with me and I'm a woman. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she got to Oh, she's sharp. Circumstances only fair to give the shot straight back to you, Sheila, with another well-deserved point, and 43 seconds left, starting now. The awkward thing is that men always fall back on saying things that's just like a woman. It's usually something to do with logic. There is this extraordinary idea ingrained in men that women are not logical. Um, Mr. Clement, why are you trying? That was too logical. Yeah, no, it too wasn't. She said logical. Logic logical. Logical.
<laughs> no, it isn't. We're now going to have free speech, which I think is a very apt subject to come at this moment. And Clement Freud, it's your turn to begin. 60 seconds, starting now. Headmaster, your grace. I expect you're wondering how much I've had to pay for these two words with which I'm about to address you. And I will answer your query immediately. Nothing. Nothing at all. Uh, Derek Nimmer, why have you jumped? I agree, you take over the subject with 44 seconds left, free speech, starting now. Of course, it's becoming increasingly difficult in this country to exercise the right of free speech. Uh, Kenneth Williams, why you... The is completely untrue. The right of free speech is certainly not in any way threatened in this country oh. at all. Well, I... Quite right, quite right. Absolutely right. Uh, whether we entirely agree, I do agree that it is not increasingly difficult, as Derek said. That is utterly untrue. But he said free speech was becoming increasingly difficult. That is untrue. So I agree with you, Kenneth. You take the subject, 39 seconds left, free speech starting now. This is something that has been fought for in Europe by some of the most enlightened liberal statesmen and philosophers for many years.